Okay, uh, my name is Joe Mazzalotti. I am a Turbo Native expert, and today we're going to dive into working with native JavaScript alerts in our Turbo Native app. So, first, you'll see here that we have an HTML page with alert and confirm button. Clicking them doesn't do anything. Let's wire up the left one to show a native JavaScript alert, and the right one to wire up a native JavaScript confirm dialog. Here's our HTML code that powers this. You'll see we have two buttons or two links styled like buttons through Bootstrap, alert and confirm that neither do anything. So we're going to use stimulus to wire up those calls to the JavaScript code. So back in our console here, we're going to use bin rails g stimulus and create a dialogues controller. This will create the dialogues controller JavaScript file for us and also update our manifest. That's what our controller looks like out of the hood. Here, we want to want to wire it up as our data controller dialogues. And then when we click one of these, we're going to want to call a specific method. So data action dialogues show alert. And then the same thing down here, but show confirm. We don't need our connect method at all, but we can have our show alert method grabbing that event as the parameter and our show confirm method and the same thing here. First thing we want to do is prevent default on these. This will make sure that nothing actually happens by default. It won't try to visit the page of hash, which sometimes will refresh the page depending on how you have turbo wired up. So for show alert, we want to do alert. Hello world. That's all we need to actually show an alert in JavaScript. Doesn't look great, but it's how it works. And then for confirm, we're going to do the same thing with confirm. And we're going to ask, are you sure here? Those are usually used to ask for confirmation before some sort of destructive action. Kind of like, are you sure you want to delete this record in Rails? So go back to our HTML page here and refresh. When I click alert, I should see hello world in a native JavaScript alert. I can't click out or do anything. I have to hit close. And same thing for confirm. I'll get are you sure with a cancel and an OK method. What we're going to want to do before we go into the Turbo Native is to just show the result of that uh, confirm action in HTML somehow. So let's have a, a P class here, a paragraph tag with a little bit of a margin top. And then also, let's say result of confirm. And then a span here with a data dialogues target equals result. And we'll also just make that bold font weight bold here and close out our paragraph tag now back in our controller on the bottom we're going to want to have static targets equals result this will allow us to wire up into the dialogues result target and then we're going to want to set that this dot result target dot inner text equal to the result of confirm this returns a true or false value so this will set the value of this span to true or false. We'll refresh that page. We have our HTML rendered. When I click confirm and click OK, we'll get true. Confirm and cancel and we'll get false. This will be helpful when we get into the Turbo Native code and we actually want to start seeing what happens when we confirm or, or, or cancel things. So now we have all of that wired up. Let's open up our Turbo Native app. This is the code that you will build if you walk through my Turbo Native in 15 minutes demo. That's available on YouTube or you can Google it. There'll be a link in the comments below if you can't find it. But this is all the code that we wrote in that. It's 50 lines of code and ripping out a storyboard. It pretty much is the bare bones uh, Turbo Native integration you'll need to be able to click links and navigate around an app. Running that, we will see this page here, exactly what we were looking at over here, except in our native Chrome. So as you might expect, clicking alert and clicking confirm don't do anything. They don't show any UI. But you will notice that clicking confirm did set this to false. Because we actually haven't implemented the handler for it, the OS assumes that the user cannot confirm it. So they automatically follow the, the non-destructive or the default safe route, which is canceling that. So even if you don't add anything to your Turbo Native app, this is super helpful because you'll always essentially get back cancel. So how do we actually add handling to this to our iOS app? 
The first thing we're going to want to do is look at where we create our session. If you remember, the session is kind of like the core concept of Turbo Native. It's where all of the view routing and, and handling goes and all the visiting pages, the screenshotting. Here we're creating a session with a web view configuration, a way to configure that embedded web view. We want to go one layer deeper and actually deal with a web view itself. Here we're going to create a, a web view from scratch with a zero frame. We don't need to worry about the frame. Turbo is going to handle that sizing for us and pass in the configuration that we had. And now instead of creating a session from a configuration, we're going to want to create it from a web view. So without any other changes, this should just work as before. Nothing actually changed except we have our own web view instance to work with. Here, we're going to want to set the UI delegate. The UI delegate is, doesn't give us help, help there, but the UI delegate is what handles these JavaScript and alerts and confirmation dialogues. And we need to respond to this and be the delegate so we can answer those questions that the OS asks us. So of course it's saying to us, hey, you can't be a WK UI delegate because scene delegate doesn't conform to that protocol. So if you remember from last time, when we extended scene delegate to handle session delegate protocol, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing here. Extension, scene delegate, and this time WK UI delegate. We build that, we're gonna succeed, but with no actual changes. All of the uh, protocol methods in WK UI delegate are optional. So we don't have to worry about actually adding anything if we don't want to, but that doesn't really get us very far. So the methods that we want to worry about are run JavaScript alert panel and run JavaScript confirm panel. You'll notice that there's two of those methods each. There's this one for alert and then this one for alert. The only difference is that this one has a completion handler. You can see that as the last parameter here. And this one is an async. It's cut off, but async which means that it will be called, we can return out of frame or out of thread asynchronously. Unfortunately, we don't wanna use those new async JavaScript APIs because of the way that we're gonna wire up a controller to handle it. So we're gonna go back to basics with a regular old completion handler. This extremely long method, if you wanted to read it, it'd be web view, run JavaScript panel with message, initiated by frame completion handler, is what gets called when someone clicks on the alert JavaScript in your app. So just to confirm here, we can print that out into the console. You have the console running down on the bottom. I click alert here and we blow up. We blow up because we didn't call the completion handler. You'll see here a completion handler passed to Turbo Native initiated by a completion, uh, completion handler was not called. That is a big problem, and one of the kind of downsides of using these APIs is that you need to call this completion handler, otherwise the OS will, as you saw, blow up on you. So we're just going to call it. There's no parameters, and that tells the OS that we're done handling the processing of this alert. And you'll see here that we now have multiple times of alert popping down into the console. Okay, great. So we've proven that we can wire it up, but let's actually show something. To do that, we're going to use a class called UI Alert Controller. This was extracted from UI Alert View, if you remember from that, and also the, the little dialogues that pop up from the bottom. Those are called action sheets, but now they're kind of consolidated into this one controller here, which works really nicely for us. We're not going to pass in a title, but we are going to pass the message from here which is what we get as a parameter. It's essentially what you passed into your JavaScript function when you called alert. This is translated to the message parameter. So we're gonna set that as the message and our preferred alert style is going to be alert. That's going to present it as a little dialogue in the middle, very similar to how the web will work. We're gonna to wanna to take that alert and we're gonna present it on top of our navigation controller. This is going to present that in a way that makes sure that it's on top of the screen. And our navigation controller is what we are using all the way at the top here. That's kind of like our root navigation in the app. If you went back to here on line 24, our Windows root view controller is nav controller. So it's gonna be right on top of our app exactly what we want. 
Finally, we'll want to make sure that we call that completion handler so we don't blow up again. When we run this, we have an alert. We have a native alert showing on the screen that we can't do anything to. Uh, there are no buttons. So now this user actually must quit the app to get out of this. Not a very good UX, but at least we proved a point. To deal with adding buttons, recall we're going to want to be working with UI alert actions. They are ways of adding configured buttons to the screen with different types. So we'll grab our alert here and we will do add action. Oops. And this is a UI alert action. It takes a title, it takes a style, and it also takes a completion handler. Here we're going to want to just say dismiss because you can't really do anything to these. And it's going to be the default type, default style. The style is, again, what will make it look different, depending on if it's destructive, it'll be red. If it's canceled, it'll be bold. Default is just boring, plain text. But this also takes a completion handler, which you'll see as I added those curly braces. This code gets run when the alert is tapped or acknowledged. So we're going to want to move our completion handler inside of that code, because we don't want to tell the OS that we've acknowledged this until the user actually clicks the dismiss button. Let's run this and we'll see now that when we click alert, we get a nice dismiss button. Clicking dismiss, as expected, we'll dismiss that dialogue. Everything's working great. Let's move on to confirm. Now we're gonna to wanna to work with run JavaScript confirm panel initiated by frame with completion handler. And we're gonna to wanna to pretty much copy the same code. The only difference is if I try to build this, it's gonna say that we're missing a parameter at number one slot for completion handler. It's kind of hard to see it here. Let me make my screen a little bit smaller. But this completion handler takes a block that has a Boolean as the first parameter. This one has nothing. It means you can return void, nothing at all. This one needs a Boolean. We need to pass in here true or false to tell if the user actually acknowledged or dismissed, canceled that dialog. So here, Let's do confirm with the style of default and we'll pass in true and we'll add another action called cancel with the style of cancel and pass in false here. So now we have two different buttons on the screen. When we confirm it, we're going to say to the completion handler, yes, they confirmed it and cancel. We're going to say false. Running our app one more time, our alert is still working as expected and when we click confirm, we're gonna get two different options now. Cancel, which is styled like cancel right here. It's bold. It's kind of like the thing, if you don't know what this dialog says, you can cancel and back out and be safe and then confirm. And you'll see when we click confirm, we get true, which is exactly what we want in our JavaScript to actually handle that confirm dialog. We click cancel, that'll change to false. And again, there's no way to, I'm clicking here, there's no way to actually tap out of this. You have to confirm or cancel just like you would on the web. We're going to take this one step further here and we're going to work back into our confirm dialogues and we're going to want to get rid of our controller here. We're going to get rid of our controller, get rid of our data actions, and instead we're going to want to wire up this as if it was a link to deleting something on our Rails app. So this would be something like link to confirm, something like, uh, you know, slash events to, and then we'd have something along the lines of data turbo method delete, right? You've seen this before, I'm sure. Uh, this is how we would send a delete. This would have to be button. Button to confirm uh, data turbo method delete. What we can add here is turbo confirm. Delete this event. And now when we run our code, we should be able to see that dialog present. We now have delete this event. By clicking cancel, nothing will happen. The OS will pass false back up to the JavaScript code and assume that the user clicked cancel on the native dialog in JavaScript. But if we click confirm, we're gonna post a delete method to events slash two. So this is a really cool way to tie that back into Rails. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't really use confirm dialogues out of the, you know, myself. Rails uses one under the hood 
for these type of destructive act actions. So last thing, if you're only gonna use this for destructive actions, you might wanna style this as destructive. Oops, not that one. We don't wanna change cancel as destructive. We wanna change confirm as destructive. And now we'll get that actually in red, which is really nice. But I caution that because any confirm dialog is gonna have this styling. There's no actual way to extract any more data out of this. All we get is the web view, the message and the frame. And I don't really want to go into like web view and like trying to parse out something from the DOM. So take that with you, Will. That wraps up how to handle native JavaScript alert dialogues and confirm dialogues in a Turbo Native app. My name is Joe Mazzalotti. If you want more help on Turbo Native, check out my website below. It's mazzalotti.com and leave a comment if this was helpful so I know what type of content to create in the future. Thanks.